In this and the next videos, we will be investigating alpha oscillations and their relationship to the SSVEP effect. So let me start by saying a few words about alpha. Here you see a picture of Hans Berger, the famous German scientist from the early 20th century. Now, the presence of brain oscillations was already known since the 19th century. But Hans Berger was the first person to show that you can measure these neural oscillations from outside the brain in humans, and also that these oscillations were modulated by cognitive factors like memory and solving math problems. Berger was also the first person to describe a lot of the features in EEG data that we still analyze today, including waveform shapes and cross-frequency coupling. So here you see some traces of the EEG data that Hans Berger acquired. Now they didn't have computers back then, so the analyses were done by tracing out these sine waves on the same paper as the EEG. So these are the brain signals, and these are sine waves at 10 hertz that are also printed out onto the same page. I hope you see that this is actually conceptually the same idea as the Fourier transform line up a sine wave with our empirical signal and see how closely they match. Anyway, the point is that Berger found that the most prominent feature in the EEG data was oscillations at 10 hertz, which he called the alpha rhythm. In fact, you can see alpha in the raw EEG signal. So this is the same slide that I showed in the beginning of this module, and we can pick, you know, one of these uh, oscillation bursts here, like this one here is convenient because of the time marker. So this is zero, this is 500 milliseconds, so this is half a second. And we can just count here. So we have one peak, two peak, three peaks, four peaks, five peaks. So we have five cycles in 500 milliseconds, which is exactly 10 hertz. You can also see here that alpha is not continuous over time, it's coming and going in bursts. So there are time windows where there is strong alpha and other time windows where there is little or no alpha. So in this video, we are going to compute endogenous alpha across the entire time window, so across the entire trial period, and then we are going to compute task-related alpha. So what you see here in this plot is an ERP or an event-related potential. This is the time domain trial average response that's locked to the trial onset. Now, we're not actually working with the ERP in the MATLAB code in this video. I'm just plotting this here to show you the time windows that we'll be using to create the alpha power. So first, we compute alpha power across the entire time window. And then to compute task-related alpha power, we need to extract the alpha power in two time windows one just before the trial starts, and one during the trial period. So what you need to do in MATLAB is identify these two time windows. So one time window that goes from minus 1,000 milliseconds to zero, and another time window that goes from zero to 1,000 milliseconds. And then you want to compute the FFT of the data separately within these two windows. So you're going to compute one FFT for these data and a separate FFT for these data. And then we define task-related alpha as the ratio of the power between these two windows. So the ratio of alpha power here to alpha power here. And actually, we are going to use the log of that ratio because that's commonly done in signal processing. Okay, now when you do that analysis for all of the data channels, all the electrodes, that will allow you to create topographical maps of alpha power. And that's what you see here. So this is the raw alpha power from the entire time window. And this is the task-related alpha power. This is the ratio of post-trial, so the one-second post-trial window of alpha relative to the one-second pre-trial alpha window. It's pretty interesting to see that although these two maps come from the exact same frequency, the spatial distributions look quite different. Anyway, I hope that's enough information to get you started in the code, and now it's time to switch to MATLAB. Computing alpha power for the entire trial period is actually already done. We've already extracted the power 
over all the frequencies from the entire trial period. So all we need to do is extract the specific dynamics for the alpha range. So what I do here is define the frequency range for alpha that is standard to go from 8 hertz to 12 hertz. And you can see I'm using this function dsearchn just like in the previous video. So we're searching through the frequencies vector. Now in the previous video, we were only looking for one number at a time. Here we're going to look for two boundaries, 8 hertz and 12 hertz. And then you'll see later on we're going to average the power from 8 to 12 hertz. Okay, so we define our frequency range. This is the frequencies in hertz. And then we want to find the indices corresponding to those frequencies in hertz. Oh, look at this. We get exactly the same error message that I warned you about previously. Okay, so what is the problem? Well, here, this is already a column vector. We've already transposed this row vector to be a column vector. But this second input, frec range, this is a row vector. So we need to transpose this one as well. So it becomes a column vector. So now we can run that. And that gives us these two numbers. And again, just as a quick reminder, these two numbers are indices into the vector of frequencies in hertz. And that tells us what are the frequencies or what are the indices that correspond to our frequencies in hertz. All right, so let's see. So therefore, we can make a topographical map of alpha using the same data matrix that we have used in the previous video. So this was all channel power. And let's see, we want all of the channels. So all of the channels. And then we want not all the frequencies and not just one frequency, but we want an average over a range of frequencies. And that range is, defi is defined by the boundaries of that range is defined by this variable alpha idx. So it's going to be alpha idx1 to alpha idx2. Let me actually get rid of all these figures. We don't need them right now. Okay, and then close brackets. So now if I look at the size of this matrix, this is 55 by 17. So this is 55 channels, and there are 17 frequencies between 8 hertz and 12 hertz. So we want to average over all of these frequencies here. So I will write mean, and then we want to average over the second dimension. Okay, so let's see. Let's run all of this code here, and this looks good. Now, this is not exactly like what it looked like in the slides, and that's because I had color map jet in these slides. So now that reproduces the figure that we saw in the slides. Okay, so the uh, power spectrum over all the time points was already computed for us. However, the power spectrum in those two time windows is not already computed for us. So we need to do that. We're going to need to run some new FFTs here. So remember the two time ranges that we want to specify go from minus 1,000 to 0, and then from 0 to plus 1,000 milliseconds. I'm going to do a little trick here. I'm going to write minus 1,000, 0, 1,000, because both of those time windows overlap at 0. So we don't actually need to define that time point twice. Okay, so these are the time points that we want in milliseconds, and then we need to convert them into indices. Now, this is not indices in frequencies. These are now indices in time. And time, remember I had mentioned this very briefly at the beginning of the uh, first video in this module. The time points are stored in eeg.times. So these are all the time points in the trial. So there's time points going up to 2.5 seconds. And let's see where it starts. It starts, well, actually, to see where it starts, I'm just going to type eeg.times1. So the time vector goes from minus 1500 milliseconds to plus 2500 milliseconds. This looks like it says 2.5, but actually this is, maybe I will scroll up to the top just to make sure that that's clear. So this is, so MATLAB is printing out these numbers in scientific notation. So all these numbers is this number printed times 10 to the power of 3. So this is not minus 1.5, this is minus 1500. Okay, so again, we need to find the index into EEG times that is closest to minus 1,000, 0, and plus 1,000. Okay, so we need to write EEG.times. 
and then uh, this time range here. So eg dot times is also a row vector, so we need to transpose it into a column vector. Now computing the power average over all of the trials is very similar to the code we've been using previously, except now we are indexing only these specific time points. So previously, we've had code that looked like this, where we say, you know, the power spectrum over the FFT over all the data. Now we want the FFT over all of the channels, all of the time points, and all of the trials. And we want to compute the FFT over the second dimension, which of course is time points. Now here I'm specifying the second input to be the same number of time points as our full Fourier transform over the whole trial period. This ensures that we can use the same frequencies vector. Okay, let's see. So this is for power pre-stimulus. So I'm actually just going to copy and paste that here because we want to write exactly the same code, but we are just changing the time index. So this is time index one to two, and this is two to three. And remember, I'm using this little trick here because we, we have this overlapping point at zero. Now, we don't actually care about the raw alpha power in these two time windows per se. What we are interested in is the ratio, or the log of the ratio of post-stimulus power to pre-stimulus power. So that's what we do here. Let's see, I will close that figure. So this line of code is already written out uh, completely for us. So we can just look at this code and make sure that we understand what's going on here. So we have the power post-stimulus and the power pre-stimulus. We want all of the channels. So remember, there's a two-dimensional matrix of channels by frequency. So we want all the channels and we want um, just the frequencies from this range, so 8 to 12 hertz. And then we average over the second dimension, which is frequencies. So this is going to give us a vector of channels. So there's 55 elements in this vector because there are 55 channels, and uh, the one is for averaging over these frequencies. Now I'm using the uh, ellipse here, so three periods here, to allow me to continue writing this line of code on the next line. So I think this is a nice way to organize your code because you can see exactly how these line up and the variables differ only by name here. Okay, so this computes the ratio and then we take the log of that ratio. Okay, and then we want our topographical map, but in fact, I want to go back and redraw the first topographical map. And then we can get our second topographical map. And this looks good. So this is almost exactly what I showed in the slides, except in the slides, the figure I had in the slides had the jet color map. So it looked more like this. Very nice. So now we have data for the SSVEP from previous videos, and we have data for endogenous alpha and task-related alpha, which we have from this video. And now we are going to see how those two features of the EEG relate to each other. That's coming up in the next video.